Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. I'm Glenn Craig, and I will be your moderator tonight. Um, today is a bit of a special show. Usually, we, we all tend to record from the, the comforts of our own home. Uh, there's five of us, and we all get online, and we record. And today, we are in New Orleans at the Financial Blogger Conference, otherwise known as FinCon. And um, if we sound a little bit different, I mean, part of it's because we're all sitting next to each other here, and the other part of it is it's 7.30 in the morning. So those who, who listen and watch frequently might realize that um, we record about 10 o'clock on a Wednesday night. So it's a little bit different time-wise for us. But anyway, let's go back to um, our illustrious panel here. We have Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog and Miranda Marquit of Planting Money Seeds. Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters and Kyle Prevo of youngandthrifty.ca. Um, they weren't able to make the, the conference this weekend, but they are part of our normal panel. And we have a special guest here. We have Joe Berman of Country Financial. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming here. So your, your company here, they, they put together some, some surveys, and you have one here that's pretty interesting. And basically, it'll tie in, our topic here is, why aren't we investing? So your survey has some some eye-opening facts here. 51% of the people you surveyed are not investing in any way, shape, or form. In, uh, in the financial markets, yes. We saw 51% were, felt that they were not investing in the stock market, bond market, or anything. Um, that's, that's really, really surprising out there that half are kind of sitting on the sidelines during some of the, maybe the best five years the market has seen in quite a while here. Uh, I, think, I think there's a lot of questions around maybe why not. Why are they sitting on the sidelines? Uh, we saw just over half, about 56%, felt that they didn't have enough money to get started in the market. Uh, about one in eight were very distrusting of the financial markets, uh, perhaps being burned after the last several years during the housing bubble and the dot-com bubble, the Great Recession. Uh, and another one in eight just didn't even know where to start. And, now, how to, and how to get started. Just to go back a little bit, um, what kind of people were surveyed for this? Like, what, what type of people are we looking at? Is this just generally everyone, or are we talking about younger people, older people, or is this just everybody overall? There's just not, like, about half the people aren't investing. Each, each and every month, we survey over 2,000 individuals across the country, all sorts of age groups there. So it, uh, it truly is a good sort of cross-section of America there. So young, old, rich, poor... Uh, and again, half felt that they were not investing in the markets at this time. Of these people, are, is there any sort of cross-section that they may be investing and they just don't realize it via pensions or 401k plans? Uh, that was not something that we had tested for, but certainly, you know, that, it, that could be some of it, that there just isn't some general, edu, uh, some, some general education out there, that they didn't realize what their 401k was in or what their IRAs were in. Uh, but we also know just kind of some general numbers out there. About one in three aren't saving anything for retirement. Uh, so these numbers may not be all that surprising when you factor that into the mix. Yeah, that's actually really, <clears throat> really scary when you think about it, that almost a third of people are not even saving for retirement at all and are not aware of the fact that they need to get started. Right. And, and going back historically, you know, 20-some 20, 20 years ago where everyone had – a defined benefit pension plan, now you're down to maybe one in 10, one in nine still have a defined benefit pension plan. Uh, Social Security maybe isn't quite as secure as it once was. Uh, And that three-legged stool is suddenly just one leg. It's it's really counting on you and your personal savings to to have a great retirement there. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that that one whole leg is is pretty much missing from the market now. Pensions, uh, unless you're in the, the government sector, in some way, shape, or form, you, you're really not going to get that, that portion put away. So a lot of it's really going to be on each individual's shoulders. Absolutely. So when Absolutely. You, you hear that half of people aren't investing pretty much in anything, uh, that doesn't forebode well uh, down the line, mm-hmm. especially for people who may be closer to retirement. I think it's something, too, where people think uh, 
they can always get to it later, and they never do. <laughs> and it's, it, when, when you leave it in their own hands, they don't kind of get the idea of, of the, the power of having all that extra time to invest. We, we, we talk all the time about, um, you know, a lot of our clients and things will talk about, you know, is now a great time to invest in things. And, and I've always told people it's not about timing the market. It's time in the market. It's, yeah. it's having yeah. it in there for a long, long time. Uh, and those, and really letting those investments compound. Yeah, really, the best time to invest is almost always now. Well, it's almost always yesterday, but I, <laughs> now I've, is the second best. I've told my clients I only invest in the market on days that end in Y. Uh, <laughs> it's 7.30 in the morning here, so I had to think about that for a little bit. <laughs> can, can I get Monday, you on Monday, Which day Tuesday, can I Wednesday. <laughs> Maybe in a different language I could catch you on that. Okay. So let's go into... Um, why, what is stopping people from, from investing? Because I think it's, it's pretty important to get into people's heads and see why they aren't doing this when maybe, they, maybe then we can in, help educate them and get people into it. So you, part of your survey here says 56% say that not having enough money is the biggest obstacle. Correct. And they just felt they didn't have enough, that life was over, overtaking you know, their everyday living expenses, overtaking that ability to save. Um, now, I would, I would kind of say with many things, as in many things, you know, the most important step you take is the first one. Um, I'll, I'll share a little story here. I, years and years ago, I used to play baseball. I used to play high school base, baseball, and I had a great coach. He was uh, very good at, at uh, motivating us. We were doing base running drills one day, and me being the bigger guy on the team there, not the fastest, I confess I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And, and he's like, Berman what are you doing? He said, you can't steal second base with one foot on first. You're going to have to take a lead. Most important step you're going to take is the first one. The rest of it is inertia. Uh, So it, you know, taking that first step, getting started, uh, something as little as $20 a week, $20 a week, that's a, that's a latte every day. That's, Five years from now, that's sixty-three hundred dollars over a lifetime of work. That's that's over two hundred thousand uh, dollars. So, taking small steps, any step you can take, will get you started and get you moving down that road. And I think that's a really good point. That you can. A lot of people don't realize that now with the brokerages and with fractional investing and with automatic investing plans, you can get started with. Uh, a really small amount. You can get get your twenty five bucks and go open a brokerage account, or as little as even ten dollars. Yeah, absolutely. And, and historically, it's probably the easiest for anyone to invest in the general market than it's ever been before. Mm-hmm. Definitely, much much more affordable and an easier entry point for people to get into. And there are so many there are so many investment products now that are easy to understand and that aren't as risky. You know, when you when you start investing in index index uh, funds or index ETFs, there's a lot that you can do with that and you don't have to worry about the stock picking. I think mm-hmm. a, another problem is a lot of people think it's complex, it's hard, I have to know a lot about stocks, I have to know about P.E. ratio, and people start looking at you know P.E. ratio and what am I going to do and balance sheets and oh my gosh. And really, there are ways to get invested without having to go through all of that and, and get started and then you can educate yourself on you know the the little minutia later. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge personal responsibility person, and uh, you know I think investors out there, our, our workers and employees, have to take some personal responsibility for this biggest expense uh, that they're going to have as far as retirement goes. And uh, you know, there's been some research out there. People spend more more time going and deciding which phone they're buying that you're going to throw away or lose in the next. 12 to 24 months than you do ever thinking about the investments in your 401k plan at work or setting aside money for retirement. I mean, you wouldn't go any, anywhere in life without your maps app on your phone or OnStar in your car with those turn-by-turn directions and re- recalculating along the way. Uh, See, you bring up something interesting there because I was going to ask, is it possible that today's generation, um, it's really different for them trying to get by and invest and, and just pay for general expenses than maybe prior years have been. Is, is the economy changed to such a point where, you know what, I, I hear what you're saying, it is hard to scrape together a couple extra dollars. But then, then you think, like, Apple just released a whole bunch of new phones. How many people in this 51% 
are going to plop down 200 plus bucks to to get the latest uh, latest version. The latest the latest piece of technology or the newest i iPad coming out. Right. Thing. So so how much of it maybe is that we, we our priorities are just a little different. So the economy has changed, but it's. It's the way we look at money, maybe, and yeah. our own and, and I, and, I would say, and I would say for our youngest generation, uh, things have changed. I mean, we've done some research here over the uh, – we've done some studies here just this past spring on cost of college and educating kids and the amount of student loan debt uh, continues to grow. It's one of the fastest-growing sectors of debt out there, uh, bigger than mortgages, bigger than you know credit card debt and things. So uh, that, I think, is a huge burden, for at least for our newest – set of investors out there. Uh, and these folks are also the ones that have had, you know, been recently exposed to the Great Recession and seeing markets and, and Wall Street kind of collapse there. Well, that gets into the second statistic that you have here, 12% distrust, distrust the stock and bond markets. Um, and, and where is this distrust coming from? From, like you say, it's the recession. Does it go back even further that we see these Enron type of companies that, that collapse? Or y- what's drawing these people to say, you know what, I- I'm not going to put my money there? I think it's all of those things. I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my own kids. I have a, I have a couple daughters, 21 and 19. Um, they, they grew up, uh, they're studying all of the companies like Enron and WorldCom, Global Crossing, and those folks of the early 2000s that, that had collapsed. Uh, they're looking at you know how the how the uh, housing bubble collapsed and Lehman and and Bear Stearns and things of, of 2008. So I think there is a lot of distrust and and the markets you know don't always go up. They've seen their parents maybe lose their house uh, or housing values collapse and they've seen their mom and dad lose a job. So I think they are very very skeptical. Uh, one of the things that's actually interesting is actually uh, uh, looking at the older generation, those in their 50s are also some of the most distrusting, uh, but those are the folks closest to retirement. That, yeah, that doesn't surprise me too much, uh, especially with the older people that were looking forward to retirement, and then 2008, 2009 came along, and uh, when, you, when you see a bunch of that get wiped out, and a lot of them pulled their money out, mm-hmm. <laughs> making it even worse. Yep. <laughs> they locked in those losses. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me that, uh, that there'd be a lot of mistrust. I don't always feel comfortable about it myself when I invest, but I know I'm not smart enough to be smart enough <laughs> to, to, to pick uh, the right time and the right stock, so I just yep. go ahead anyway. Yep, and it's about, it's about investing for the long term. It, I mean, it's some pretty simple rules. It's about staying diversified and, uh, you know, watching, watching your fees and expenses and, and really investing for that long term, and, and we saw that many of them were seeing, those that were investing, were t- treating that as a long-term savings mechanism. And I think Tom makes a really good point when he talks about people panicking and, and pulling that, that money out of the market, even though they've got all these losses because they're like, oh, well, I've lost so much. Now is the time to pull out. But really, it, it's not. It's not the time to pull out. And, and you really have to go against your instincts. You have to go against those that fear and that panic. And it's hard. It's hard to say, well, over time, when you, when you look at the trend lines, you, you look at it in the short term and it looks really choppy but if you back up and take it over decades the trend line it smooths out and it smooths out in an upward direction that is an upward upward sloping line definitely yeah. and, and so i think it's you know you, you have to really step back and say you know um i am doing this for the long term and over 30 years i'm not going to lose as much and as mm-hmm. and if you're in if you're in an index fund or an index ETF that follows the market chances are over time you will come out ahead so is it a case of there's a lot of fear mongering in the media is it just bad marketing because at the same time that there is all these fears the market is going up right so people are making money they're doing well on their investments if they're they're in the general market there, there is a lot of noise. I mean, even a decade ago, you look at, you know, you look at how fast the, the cable and technology industry has spread. You know, there are uh, scores of television and radio stations, you know, blasting this every day. Uh, there's thousands of websites out there where they can get some information, uh, and, and that's often what they're getting. They're just getting data and information. Uh, you know, decades ago, people had that defined benefit pension. They weren't looking at their 401k balance every day. 
uh, or every week at work. So I think now with a lot of it being much more dependent on that individual investor, you are looking at your 401k balance and you are getting more nervous and, and you're catching CNBC or, or how the Dow did today. Um, whereas decades ago, you weren't, you weren't checking the balance in your, in your pension plan or it wasn't reported as a balance. It said, hey, you had X amount of guaranteed income at 65 when you retired. It's like we're not innocent anymore. You're not going to get taken care of by your company or the government. You really have to, it's going to be in your hands in one way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and it's not just one generation of the young. Everybody's being hit with this now. Because yeah. there's certainly, I've heard a lot of people where they're older um, and they've had pensions. Mm-hmm. And then the pensions are pulled. Mm-hmm. You know, and then all of a sudden they find themselves through some reason or another, I lost this big portion that's not there anymore. That's right. pretty scary. Right. And I think you make another good point there that you, it goes back to, you know, I have to look at this and say, who's really going to take care of me in the long run? And as much as you'd like to think, you know, I've got a great pension and it's going to work out great for me, the reality is that, you know, a defined contribution plan is really the only way to, to, to better protect yourself because with that defined benefit plan, you know, like you're saying, they can cut that back or they can yank it and it's, and it happened. So you really do have to step back and say, well, I need to do what I can for myself. So, so Glenn, kind of uh, circling back to why people maybe aren't investing in the market or feel that they're investing in the market. Uh, one of the things I do as an advisor all the time is my responsibility is to move people to the front of the line. You know, you look at your monthly expenses each, each, each month, you've got, you've got your cable bill, your your phone bill, your, your rent check, your mortgage check, and if there's anything left, then you save that. And it's my job to you know, kind of teach you to treat yourself with some dignity. Let's move you to the front of the line, ahead of the cable bill and ahead of the cell phone bill, and let's set some money aside for you before we pay all of these other things. Yeah, to be honest, most people, if you're not saving it first before all that stuff, there's not going to be anything left afterwards. You're going to expand Most to people what's find in your checking account or your wallet or, or they credit have t- limit. They have too much month and not enough money. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes back to another thing that's interesting. Um, the market has been doing well overall. Mm-hmm. And people are saying that they don't have enough money. So where is where's that disconnect? And it, it's like you're saying that money is going into buying things like consumer goods. It's going into their cable bill. It's going to the newest phones and the newest cars. So the money maybe is there, and the money is actually propping up the market that, ironically, they're not taking advantage of. Right, right. And, and certainly in the job sectors, I mean, the jobs, jobs reports are, are looking better, you know, than they were a year ago. Uh, you know, it was maybe a 7% infl- uh, rate last September. Now it's down to just over 6%. Uh, so those those jobless numbers continue to improve, but I think wage wage growth has been very sticky. Uh, some of our younger Americans, even our older group as well, have been particularly hard hit with not a lot of wage growth, um, and they're seeing that uncertainty of the markets. Or you know they don't have a pension. They're looking at retirement looming here. That is still causing a lot of nervousness out there. We're in, I, I want to say, an interesting time where there's a lot of adjustment between either jobs and careers and investing. And I think it still has some settling to do. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear mm-hmm. you don't want to pay too much attention to, to things because it will drive you nuts, but you hear all these Fed reports, you know, they're not going to raise the rates yet. They're not going to raise the rates yet because the, the economy still needs just that little bit of, of extra help, they say. Well, and if you so, caught the markets yesterday, there was news out there that the Fed said that they're not going to be raising interest rates for a while. And you saw the response there. Uh, you know, and there's been a lot of discussion, hey, what if interest rates rise? My conversation with, with a lot of our older Americans as they're nearing retirement, what if interest rates don't rise? What if, what if these aren't low interest rates? What if these are the new interest rates? And, um, you know, I, I'm convinced some of the clients I talk to, um, I have a generation of retirees that, are, that may, very well may die waiting for that 5% CD, that safe money. Everyone's looking for that. And if you find one of those, let me know, because I want to be first in line for one of those as well. I was going to say, I don't know if that's ever coming back. You, you, really, you really feel like it's just never coming back. Yeah, and, and so, you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of options out there. So folks are looking at the market to, to try and give them the income and, and growth that they're going to need for retirement. 
and at least it sounds like based on on your other survey where you said one in one out of three was only one in three are not saving. Correct. Are, Correct. So it's not like people are taking the money and they're just holding it over to the side and saying, you know what, when everything's okay, all of us, that money's just going away. It's yeah. not coming back. Yeah. Or or if they are saving, you know, if they're saving it in a you know low interest rate bank account, that's you know maybe they're getting a, a sucker or a gumball at the end of the month because that's you know it's paying pennies a month. Mm-hmm. They are they are going to go broke slowly. There safely safely I guess is the right right word here because you're just not going to get any growth. Well, yeah, and you've got inflation. They're working against them. Everybody says, well, this is safe money, but they forget about inflation risk. Mm-hmm. And these low rates, you're just going to have inflation risk, and, and that's a problem. Right. So let's go to this um, third reason here, this last reason why people aren't investing. And you have 11% are unsure how to get started. And I think this is just common for a lot of people. It's pretty darn confusing to know where to get started, what to do, what's best. Um, It's easy to get stuck in analysis paralysis. You start throwing on some of those financial channels. You read a couple of articles and you you know a little bit of information. You feel like you're dangerous now. Mm -hmm. And you just end up not doing anything because you you don't want to do the wrong thing. Right, and and I you know and I know some of that is uh, you know because of your four hundred one k at work you've got a lot of investment choices you're not sure which to do, uh, but I always encourage people do some research on your own you know take a look at what you're investing in you know be responsible for that uh, you know you're going out and you're checking a dozen different reports you know checking what car you're going to buy what cell phone you're going to buy if you're going to upgrade to the iPhone six or the six plus. Um, you know, put the same amount of time and effort in taking a look at the investments in your 401k. Uh, but, but also keep it simple. If, if you don't know what else to do, as you kind of already talked to, uh, simple things like a broad market index or even a, a target date fund can be a good starting point. So just for, for people out there that, I mean, look, it's confusing. All these terms, all of a sudden your brain turns to gobbledygook when mm-hmm. you start hearing it all. What is a broad market index or a target-based fund? So a, normally a, a mutual fund or an ETF might own you know, 50 or 100 or 150 different stocks. A broad market index is something that's going to take a basket of stocks. It may own uh, five, 500, like the S&P 500 index that you hear every day on the, on the nightly business reports, or... Um, you know, a Wilshire 5,000, so it owns 5,000 different stocks. So you basically have a cross-section of the financial market. So you're not worrying about, gosh, did I pick the right 50 stocks? I bought all the stocks out there. So, and, and again, for as little as, you know, $10 or $25 a month, you can, you can buy into these products. So you don't have to worry about what company to buy. You could just buy them all. You're all the public all ones at least. Them. And, and just like Warren Buffett says, you know, a rising tide can lift all boats. You can participate. As that tide of the market goes up, you're going to participate in that. You're not going to get left behind. And, and just a couple of minutes on um, a target-based fund, because people see these a lot in a 401k, let's say. There, there are um, lots of different varieties. Lots of different fund companies will package them up, um, some different strategies. But, but generally speaking, these are designed to kind of follow a glide path. So just as we came into New Orleans yesterday on the plane and, and the plane gradually comes in from 30,000 feet down to ground level, it's going to start very aggressive when you're young and can afford and take more risk. And gradually as you get closer to the ground, gets gets more and more in, in safer, more fixed income investments or bonds. Uh, some are designed to go to retirement. So they're set to to get very conservative right at retirement. Some are designed to go through retirement. So maybe they'll be somewhat conservative at retirement, but then continue as you enter retirement and continue to get more and more conservative. But again, if you're looking for a one-stop sort of multivitamin approach, it's it's a great way to get started for retirement. So it's still pretty shocking, 51%. I mean, we've discussed all these different factors. Really, what do we do to change people's minds? How do we get them all on the game plan? We've got we to gotta invest something somewhere because retirement will come whether it's tomorrow or 40 years from now. You know, we're, you're starting it right, right, right now, right today. It's about taking that first step, getting educated. Even if you don't have a dollar to set aside, 
that shouldn't stop you from going to the library or going online. Uh, take, take a look at any good mutual fund site, a uh, number of financial sites out there, yours included here, that they can get uh, information about the markets and start making some of those investment decisions. Taking a look at their 401k site, if you have a 401k at, at, at work, and start with some basic knowledge about that. Again, you're, you're shopping for cars, you're shopping for cell phones. Put that same effort in there to, to looking at your investment, something that you know is going to allow you to retire in 30 or 40 years here. All right, Joe. Um, I think we've gone over a lot here. There's something we like to do at the Money Mastermind Show. We like to do a final word where we go around our panel and just um, kind of sum everything up. And... Um, so we'll talk about our final word on, on why we aren't investing and maybe what we can do about it. Um, M- Miranda, what's your final word? Well, um, as always, my, my mantra is get started now and get started with your brokerage account with your 25 bucks, invest in an index ETF and set up an automatic investing plan so you don't have to think about it. That's always been my mantra and it still is because you never know what you're missing out on if you don't get started. And Tom, what's your final word? I think, it, I think the education part that we talked about is a big deal. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that you need, uh, you need to buy 100 stocks or 100 shares of a stock and you've got to pick the right one. And it is as simple as an ETF. You don't need to be this expert investor just to get started. And Joe, what's your final word? Well, as I say, I, I go back. One of the things that we talk to our clients all the time is the importance of having a plan, having some sort of game plan. You know, I mentioned the OnStar uh, pro, uh, program. I mentioned you know having the Maps app, something that's going to give you those turn by turn directions that life is going to going to throw you. Uh, we see every month in our surveys, we ask people. Uh, you know, do you have a plan? Do you work with an advisor? We see that those people that have a plan, work with some sort of professional, continue to s- save more money, accumulate more wealth, better able to meet all of life's financial goals, and ultimately feel more financially secure. So I think having that game plan and that roadmap for you to follow is crucial to success. And I just want to add that um, I think it all comes down to you. Time is gone when your company is going to take care of you or, or anything else is going to come down to you. If you're not taking care of your retirement and you're investing in finances, it's not going to happen. And it's pretty easy to start. You don't have to do a lot, um, but get in there. This is basically. definitely something that you can do. You can do. All right, Joe, thank you for joining us. Um, this has been really educational. Tell um, our audience a little bit about Country Financial and what they provide. Uh, Country Financial is a financial services company. We, we offer insurance and financial products. Uh, you can find out more information about Country at countryfinancial.com. You can also catch our uh, financial security blogs at countryfinancialsecurityblog.com or uh, also catch our tweets at, at financialsecure on Twitter. Thank you again, Joe, for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for listening in on our unique show at FinCon. Hey, everybody. Is anybody out there listening? <laughs> All right. There's some murmur there. Everybody's kind of stuffing their faces and eating bacon mm, and stuff. Bacon. But um, thank you again for joining us at the Money Mastermind Show. Until next week, be good with your money. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.